Hello scholars, welcome back, Mr. Hinkle. Mineral resources come in two broad categories, metallic and non-metallic. And in this lecture, we'll briefly look at non-metallic. So our objective is to discuss the various types and applications of non-metallic. And I think we understand metal, right, on a very personal basis. Metals, silver, gold, bronze, they're shiny. We, they conduct electricity. They are distinct from non-metallic minerals. So a wide variety of minerals that do not contain metals in their chemical composition are non-metallic minerals, like slate on the roof of a home. We use these minerals for industrial and construction purposes, as opposed to technologies which utilize more so of the metallic mineral resources. Industrial minerals. The drywall in your home is made of the mineral gypsum, right? Gypsum uh, is a common construction for drywall, for plaster. We've got clay, kaolin, and ceramics, dolomite used in the production of iron and steel, limestone um, in the production of cement. So all of these raw materials of earth go into industrial applications for various industrial processes. Sand and gravel, bits and broken up pieces of rock, are essential for construction, making concrete as the base material for our roads, for our buildings. We can create aggregates of various types of rocks and minerals that are crushed in uh, joins to be used in construction. Gemstones, aesthetic value. Diamonds, rubies, sapphires, emeralds. There's a gemstone for every single month of the year. What's yours? Mine is amethyst. And we place an aesthetic and cultural and economic value on these non-metallic minerals. Salt. Wow, salt. The use of salt for preservation of our foods really helped society grow. And uh, we use salt in everything. We need salt for our normally, normal bodily function, right? We use it to de-ice roads. It's used, got a variety of uses in the chemical industry. And as I mentioned, we consume it. Salt made of the earth, geologic uh, processes, wildly important as a natural resource for humankind. Phosphorus, we use a lot of phosphorus now for fertilizer. That phosphorus comes from minerals, the mineral appetite, appetite, various phosphate minerals. So, okay, fertilizers coming from the earth, chemicals made in labs, but also raw materials, medicines made from raw materials of the earth. So non-metallic mineral resource applications are extensive and woven through many things that we do. Graphite, talc, barite, zeolites, potash, asbestos, these are all various types of non-metallic mineral resources that we use. Asbestos, it's not so uh, popular anymore, but it was for a long time. Here is a big quarry for marble for use for sculptures and for marble countertops, quartz countertops. What the heck don't we use mineral resources for? Pretty much everything. We look at the house. Clay makes the bricks and the tiles. Limestone makes the cement. Gypsum makes the drywall. Calcopyrite for the plumbing. Marble for the flooring. Granite for the walls. Magnetite for all of the nuts and the bolts that are going into it. Bauxite for the wiring. Quartz for the glass. Chromite for the finishing touches. Your house is built on mineral resources. Both metallic and non-metallic, the wiring metallic for sure, but not to be discounted are minerals that do not contain metals, which are our non-metallic mineral resources in everything that we do harvested from the earth through the process of mining. So thank you for this brief introduction into non-metallic mineral resources.